Ladies and gentlemen, we're back in the Real Deal Talk studio. Epic 59 fighter interviews, day one. The fight is Friday, November 22nd. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't to get your tickets, get them now. Epicfighting.com. Is it Jason? Epicfighting.com. Perfect. Go to the, check out their Instagram if you want to see these interviews. Check out their YouTube, full length interviews. And speaking of interviews, in the house today for the first time in the Real Deal Talk studio is Juan Martinez. Welcome to the show, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Let's go. It's been a pleasure here to have you, my friend. So let's get down. Do you have a nickname? No, not no yet. nickname yet. Huh? How long have you been fighting? Uh, I'd say. I've been doing it like my whole life, but I okay. finally started taking it seriously for like a year and a half now. Okay. And no no nickname. How come? What's going on here? Are you, do you have a couple that are possibles? No, nah, it's just nah, just a couple of dumb ones that my coaches call me. But Okay, give it to me. What are they? Uh, I mean. You can't say them? No, nah, I can't say them. Give me one. <laughs> I mean, I mean uh, I'm like one of the only Mexicans there, so they like call me Aztec Warrior. A- I mean, SA warrior? No, uh, no, no. Aztec warrior. Oh, Aztec warrior. It's like <laughs> Aztec. I, SA. I was like SA. Hey, SA. Is that that's a is that a word? Right? It made sense, didn't I it? Mean, didn't you think that's what he said? No. I'm the only one. Okay. <laughs> you heard Aztec. Okay. For some reason I heard SA. SA. I know the Mexicans right now are they're cringing. <laughs> they're like, what is this freaking gringo? What is this guy? Relax, dude. All right, so Aztec Warrior. Yeah, I'm not sure I like yeah, that one. Yeah, I like yeah. SA, but Warrior better. I say we go with SA. Nah, I don't know. It's just I want to. I want to choose one. You know, okay. probably after after this first fight. You know, we'll just, get a we'll get a vibe. Yeah, and we may even it may even come to me during this interview because I don't know if you know this, but I'm a professional uh, nickname giver. That's, oh, that's one of my things. I've nicknamed a couple fighters on this podcast before, right? And they stuck. They came in the the ring with it and everything. So all right, so we'll see if something comes to me here. All right, so Juan, talk to me. You said you fight your old. How old, how old are you now? Uh, right now, I'm 19. I just turned 19. 19. So w- let's say you said your whole life. So what age did you start, and what did you start with? Was it wrestling, boxing, fight? Give me your go back and tell me. So I'd probably say I started like around like first grade. I was probably like seven years old. Okay. And I started off with Taekwondo when I was a little kid, mm. you know, like every little kid does. Of course. Yeah. And yep. then um, I started working my way more into boxing and Muay Thai. Yep. And then just recently... Or like, or more recently after that, like I started getting a little bit more into wrestling. And then when I got to high school, I had taken a break from all that. Like I kept training up until middle school. And then once I got into high school, I took a break from all that until my last year. That's when I started getting back into training. I started back up with Muay Thai. And then from there I joined Jiu Jitsu. Jiu Jitsu. Okay. So it started so funny because my son, I started him in Taekwondo at age, like I think four or five, somewhere around five. So you're. You said it just like everybody does, and you're right. My son started Taekwondo. He's yeah. a he's a red belt going for – he's getting getting close to going for black, uh, age nine. So you were on the tra- same trajectory, it seems like. Okay, mm-hmm. so you said you went away the beginning of high school and then came back. Was that yeah. what it was? Why would yeah. you go away? What happened? It's just because – Girls partying, what? Nah, I just wanted to try something else, you know? Like, <laughs> I wanted to try other sports. I fucking sucked at every other sport, so I just got back into it. What what did you try? Football, baseball? Shit, I, I tried everything. I tried soccer, basketball, everything. It didn't go well? No, no. They didn't even make the team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So you're like, you know what? Maybe maybe I'll go back to this fighting Yeah, thing. maybe. And so then you came back senior year in yeah. high school. Yeah. My which is like a freaking year ago, right? Yeah. Or like a year and a half? Yeah, year year and a half ago. And uh, you got right back into, where did you, where did you start training when you came back? Uh, so I joined a place called Soka uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, okay. Grove, and that's like family right now. Family, yeah. And you've been there for about a year and a half, yep. roughly. Before when you were, when you went away from fighting, where were you fighting before that? I was fighting at a, a little place like down by Spring Valley. It's called okay. House of Discipline. It's a really small place, you know. But good place. Yeah, good. Place. Got you. Got you a good base to start yeah, yeah, with. Yeah, really good base. Nice, awesome. Okay, so now. Sorry, give me the name again of who you're fighting with now. What what camp or sorry, what uh, gym? So right now I'm training at uh, Azteca Boxing. Azteca. Yeah, I'm training at Azteca Boxing and Soka Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. It's called Europe. Soka. Yeah, Soka. Soka. Yeah. Soka. Okay. And then how many days a week would you are you training right now? So I'm training uh, five days a week. Weekends are my rest days, but I'm training probably I'd say like three four times a day. Three four times a day. How many hours a day does that compute to? Um. Let's see, it's probably around like three hours in the morning, then like another three in the afternoon, so six hours a day. Oh my gosh, dude. Wow. All right. 
six hours a day, roughly five. But I do, I love the way you're taking off for the weekends to rest. Most yeah. people don't realize, especially when you're younger, mm-hmm. how important rest is. Yeah. Like you got to rest. Yeah. Cause I, I'm just coming off of an injury too, uh, from overtraining. Like yeah. I, I, I never really like focus on rest. And then, you know, it really clicked to me that, you know, there's no such thing as overtraining if you just rest enough. Correct. So literally I, I always make sure that my rest is priority. I make sure that my body is good because if my body isn't good, then I can't train to the maximum extent. That's right. So I, I'm very big on recovery. I, I sleep a lot. I, I'm i always stretching. Like literally first thing in the morning, I stretch for around 10, 15 minutes every day and making sure that my body, you know, is always good at 100%. And so you said you sleep a lot. And some people are like, probably like, what, what is he talking about? But I, I've, I've had a mattress company for 20 years. I'm known as the sleep whisperer. And the reason why is because sleep is the foundation of health and wellness. Mm-hmm. Guys, girls, who's ever listening, watching this, if number one in your entire life that you can do is sleep. Sleep's the only time the body repairs itself naturally. It's the only time. So, dude, you're on track with that. And you are right. It's impossible to overtrain if you're getting the proper rest. you got to rest the body. Because if you don't, you will not operate at your highest capacity. It's impossible. Yeah. So I love hearing this, man. So give me your rest days. Give me a whole, like, the weekend. What do you what do you do for recovery and rest? So I always, you know, I try my best to sleep in. Yeah. You know, I wake up, like, every day, 6.30 in the morning. So I try my best to sleep in and... No, sometimes naturally I just wake up early, so I always start off my day with an ice bath. I have a, oh, yeah. I have a little ice bath, you know, just to get my mind, you know, still disciplined. Yep. And don't let like the relaxation get to me too much. Yep. So then I always start off with that, and then from there it's just really stretching. I always prioritize my stretching. You know, I like to be nice and flexible, and then I have a massage gun too, and then I have a whole bunch of like medicine remedies or like Mexican remedies that oh, my yeah. mom buys me from TJ. So here we go. Yeah. I love it. Okay, so speaking of mom and family, um, in your in your training, in your gyms that you go to, uh, tell me um, who is the people that are training you. Give them a shout out. So um, there's a, in Azteca, there's a guy named Adrian. He's the one who's really like, you know, putting in that grind to help me out. Yep. You know, he's, he's going, stepping beyond to actually help me out, you know. And um, over there at my other gym, I have uh, my main coach, uh, Professor Arlon, and then my other one, uh, Coach Don. Nice. Yeah, and, and they, they teach me, you know, jujitsu, striking, all that. And so you're a year and a half on your quote-unquote comeback, mm-hmm. meaning from getting back into fighting. Is this your first fight in the cage? Yeah, this is. This is your debut. Yep. Um, now, what would you say is your specialty that you are best at, that you're most competent with? Like, what would you say is your specialty? So I did a lot of Muay Thai, like I said, when I was younger. Yep. So I say like my most solid base right now, I'd have to say is my striking. Striking. Yeah. Nice. And then uh, you know who you're fighting? Yeah, I do. Who Who is it? His name is Moises Oslin. Sure. Ah. That's how you say it. I know Moises. Yeah. 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 Um, how do you feel about this fight? Like uh, what? what's his forte? Do you know what his forte is? Yeah. He's, he's definitely a, more of a grappler type of guy. Okay. And, you know, luckily there's a lot of footage on the guy. So yeah. I've seen quite a lot. And you know he loves he loves his takedowns, so. And you're ready for that. Yep. Are you how 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 confident are you? Are you confident with this fight? Yeah, I'm pretty confident. You know, like I said, there's a lot of footage. Yeah. My coaches have been preparing me, you know, to go against them, and no, nothing against them personally. Yeah. It's just yep. like I just personally just feel confident. I love it. Yeah. So, so give me your like because six hours a day is absolutely psychotic mm-hmm. training. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Yes, you rest, which is the key. However. What is motivating you? What's your main motivation? Why do you do what you do? Why do you keep going? When you're injured, you're tired, when the, you're on your fifth hour of training, fourth hour of training, who's in your mind? What's motivating you? Give me your why. What's like, give me, why are you fighting? Why do you keep going? It's just, I just really love it, you know? Like, I'm always, I, I consider myself a very active guy. And, you know, like, I just, like I said, there's always something I've been good at. So, you know, just the feeling of going in there and like, you know, giving it your all, you know, just the feeling of fighting. Like, I love it. I've I've always loved it, you know, so I feel like that's what really pushes me. And then it's also, you know, the people that have my back and the people that really believe in me, you know, like my coaches, they actually truly believe that I could, you know, actually be someone. Yep. And I feel like that's just great. You know, that's that's all the push that I need. That's all the motivation. I love it. Yeah. And do you feel like that you're you need to prove something to somebody, yourself, family, 
people in your childhood, people that do you have, do you have something to prove? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say something to prove, but just to prove to myself that I can do it. You know, like one of my favorite quotes by Conor McGregor is your lack of discipline is almost an insult to the people that believe in you. I love that. And it's so true, man. Every, everything in life, not just fighting, but becoming successful in anything, especially business, um, whatever it is, fitness, number one word is discipline. Mm-hmm. You've got to be disciplined. And then the people that in your life that are going to benefit by you being at your best, you owe it to them to be disciplined. So I yeah. love that quote, dude. That's solid. Um, talk to me about family. How was their upbringing? How was family? Um, solid. Parents were great. Yeah. So, um, my family has always been together. You know, I'm really big on family. Yep. Yeah. Most of my life, you know, my family is always there together. We always try to spend the most time together. And I feel like the one who really pushed me into fighting is my dad. You know, my dad used to, he used to fight too when he was younger. Yep. Yeah. He used to do, um, pretty sure it was Taekwondo. He used to do Taekwondo. He was really fucking good at it apparently too. Yeah. And you know, he always enforced, I have uh, three siblings, so he really enforced all that on my siblings. And I guess I was the only one who stuck with it. Nice. And fell in love with it. And dad's, does he watch you? Does he come watch you train? Is dad still around here? Yeah. No, uh, he'll, he'll come every now and then, but you know, he's always working. Yep. Uh, we have our own business, so he's always, you know, what's your, what's your business? Uh, Construction. Nice. Yeah. Beautiful. So he's always working. Yeah. He's always working. But I mean, every time I talk to him about my fighting and everything that I did that day on my training, he's, he's always seems very happy for me. You know, he is also one of the ones who truly believes that I could be someone. How important is to to you, like, these people that believe in you? Super important to me. I don't think I could get to where I'm at today without them. Like, just the the feeling that someone can have your back. Like, every now and then, you know, you're always going to feel lazy. You're always going to not want to do anything. But just that feeling that someone there is actually, like, rooting for you and, like, believes in you, it's amazing. It's everything. Yep. And, you know, ladies and gentlemen, in your life, if you've got even one or two people that believe in you, it could, it means the world. And for, if you're, if you're that person for somebody and you believe in somebody, you have no idea how much it, of an impact it makes on your life, their life and all the people's lives that, that are going to benefit by you, you know, going after it and doing your thing. So I think you mentioned your mom earlier, right? Yeah. Give me, give me something about how much does your mom mean to you? How, how important is she in your life? How important is she in your fight game, motivating you, keeping you moving forward? Oh, my mom, super important to me. Bro. I love my mom. She, um, you know, she always, Excuse me. She always, um, you know, helps me out. She cooks me food, makes me breakfast every now and then when I'm running late. You know, every time I get home and I'm just super tired, I just want to shower and go to sleep. Like she's there. She does my laundry every now and then. Like she, she, she helps me out a lot. Like you know, I mean, I wish I could say, I wish I could say I love her even more. But yeah. I mean, oh, dude, that's amazing. Yeah. She, so without, so mom, would you say is one of your biggest whys as to why you fight so hard, literally? Oh yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, she's a mom. She doesn't want to see me get hurt, you know? So she's obviously going to, you know, say some stuff, but I mean, it's my mom, man. What could I say? I love her. Is she going to be at the fight? I hope so. <laughs> I you hope know. so. Like I said, she, she, uh, she doesn't want to see me get hurt. So Aww. Yeah. I, it's so funny. Uh, almost all the fighters, when I go to the fights, you can see the mom. Some of them are super nervous they don't want to watch you know i can only imagine yeah um all right so talk to me about this uh this fight um what what do you think is going to be like what do you see next are you just focusing on this fight how do you feel do you have any predictions for this fight for you and this guy so i wouldn't necessarily say predictions you know it's still a little bit too early yeah like i said it's my first fight you know i could just say that i'm confident right now i'm confident right now but like i said first fight i don't know how it feels he obviously has the upper hand on experience you know, I'm pretty sure he has three fights now. Yep. So I'd say right now I'm just focusing on this fight. You know, maybe after we could see what we do. But right now it's just this fight is my priority. I love it. So um, Juan, uh, give one more shout out to mom. Give her give her a, a parting uh, shout out. Love you, whatever. And then we're going to, we'll, we'll round this up. Ama, la quiero mucho. Si está viendo. Gracias por todo. También a usted, papá. Oh man, let's go. Moms, we love you. Dad, way to, way to push your son, way to set the best example by working your ass off every day. We love that dad setting the example out there. Hopefully I'll get to meet you both at the fight. Looking forward to seeing your son wrap it up and uh, get it done in the ring. Juan Martinez, it's been a pleasure, been an honor. Thank you. Epic 59, November 22nd, Real Deal Talk, Epic Fighting 
fighter interviews today. Round one, let's go. Uh...